Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fellowship Bible Church here online. Welcome to our prayer time. I'm so glad that uh, you've taken the time to just gather from wherever you are and just stop whatever has gone on in your day and in your evening so far to just come together, if not physically, in purpose and in spirit and in faith and go to the Lord in prayer. You know, I was thinking as I was going through the day and knew the prayer time was coming up here tonight and I'm going to read a couple of short passages of scripture to get us ready here in a moment, but just kind of thinking about a lot of things that are going on. And I know that, you know, as we've come into a new year now, into 2021, a lot of people, you know, some of it's tongue in cheek, but some of it's also very serious. A lot of people have been saying, you know, so, um, you know, 20, 2020, glad to see it go. Uh, but 2021 looks like it might not be much better or, you know, all these sorts of things that people say. And I understand of all that, of course, and there are lots of good reasons why people would say that. But I want to just have us all be reminded here as we go to prayer that difficult times are what our relationship with God as we go through maybe more normal times are these difficult times are what we prepare for, right? So don't be too quick to just long for everything to be like normal per se, if that makes any sense. This, these are the times that really allow a Christian to examine themselves and kind of see where their faith is at. These are the times that allow the focus and the faith and the devotion, the love of Christians to really be tested. Our supreme love for God, our supreme love for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our love for one another, which shows the whole world that we really are the disciples of Jesus Christ. These things get put to the test. These are not times that we beg and wish necessarily go away. Uh, these are times that we spend the rest of the time getting ready for, right? All the Bible study, all the prayer, all the fellowship, all of the worship, all of the encouraging one another, all of the reaching out and the preaching, all of the evangelizing, all the special projects and stuff we do here at the church. It's all to gear us up so that when times like this come, there's something of substance there and we stay close and, and strong and we stay faithful and focused on the Lord. All right. So I just want to encourage you with that, that as we pray, I feel like it's not even so much like there's all these specific things that we're praying for as much as it is when you think about praying as a church, we're praying that our faith remains steadfast and solid and strong. We're not as a church called to anything different than we are any other time or any other season or any other circumstance in life. We are called to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ. The Bible is fixed. It doesn't change and shift with seasons and times. Our call and our mission is the same. The gospel goes out. We are called to make disciples of, 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 of all the nations and and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe whatsoever things Jesus has commanded us, remembering that all authority on heaven and earth is his and that he is with us. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus is with us? We don't look to the circumstances of the world and of life to determine whether or not Jesus is with us. We know by faith that Jesus is with us because we walk with him, irrespective of the circumstances around us. Let me read you a couple of passages of scripture that I hope will help us get a little focus, and then I'll lead us in our prayer time here tonight. First, just a few verses from Psalm 92. Uh, the heading says that it's a song for the Sabbath day, which today isn't necessarily, but, but I want to read this uh, for you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Amen and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Praise the Lord. 
That's just the opening to Psalm 92. And then just a, a good, really focusing passage of Scripture from the Apostle Paul's pen here in the uh, New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. And then Paul says of himself, And I, brethren... When I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Focus. Christians, loving God, loving Jesus, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Most holy, holy Lord God, through your works we will triumph. Through your works we are victorious. Through your work we are redeemed and saved and justified. You are God. You are the creator. You are sovereign. You are Yahweh of Abraham and Isaac and Israel, the only God And the only way that anyone, Jew or Gentile, approaches you is through faith in Jesus, the Messiah, who you gave. And you have redeemed us by your own blood, Lord Jesus. You have redeemed us by your grace, Almighty God, by your power. You have redeemed us through this simple message of what you did to save sinners, this simple good news message the the glad tidings of great joy which are for all people. The Savior was born in Bethlehem and he was Christ, the Lord, and Lord Jesus. We know who you are and what you did. You gave your life. You were crucified. And when that happened, that was you taking the wrath of God against my sin, against our sin. Then you rose from the dead and conquered and destroyed all the power of death. You took the righteous requirement of the law. You took the righteous penalty of the law on our behalf. You perfectly fulfilled the will of the Father. And then you destroyed the greatest enemy of all, death itself, when you rose from it and conquered it. And now you promise life and redemption and salvation to all who trust in you. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. And you have now left us here to make us servants of that good news message. Just as the generations before us preached it and it came down and reached us, now you call us to live and to worship and to gather and to glorify you and to serve and to preach this gospel message, Lord God, to the world. Help us, Lord God, to be faithful. Even in these hard and difficult times, you have not moved. You have not shifted. 
The only thing that has happened to your plan is that it has become a shorter time before it becomes ultimately fulfilled. The only thing that has changed is that there's less time before we see you face to face and experience the fullness of that redemption. Forgive us, Lord God, for in any way being distracted from our single-minded, our hearts focused on loving and worshiping and serving you. And help us, Lord God, to be devoted to praising you. This world we live in needs the clarity of your people being devoted to you, Lord God. Let the testimony of the Christians, even if we suffer for it, even if we're mocked for it, even if people tear us down for it and rip us apart, help us to be devoted to you, Almighty God. You are our King. You are our Lord. You will return one day and you will redeem your elect. And we pray, Lord God, that you would help us to be faithful in serving you now. Dear Lord God, there are, of course, many hard things going on. We pray, Lord God, for the turmoil that seems to be at work in like the, the system of government in our country here. We thank you for our country. We thank you, Lord God, that we've been able to be blessed to be part of this country, Lord God. And I pray that you would settle all things according to your will and to your plan and that your children, Lord God, would keep their eyes fixed on you no matter what and that our joy would be set on you and on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let your will be done and we call upon you to execute righteousness in our land, Lord God. Let those who are faithful love you and trust you, Lord God. Lord, as the, the pandemic continues to, to go on, and Lord, I pray that kind of two things, Lord. I, I want to pray that you would help us who are Christians, even in spite of that, to be faithful to you, to serve you, and to worship you, Lord God. Even if some of the things that we do physically together are limited in certain ways, I pray, Lord God, no matter what, you'd help us to be faithful and to be that testimony as a church, the manifestation of the mystery of your body, Lord God, in this world. Help us to be faithful to that, Lord God. And Lord, I also pray, knowing, Lord God, even in our own church and even in the families of some of the people in our own church and other families and people that we know around us, Lord God, who are struggling and suffering, Lord God, with the COVID illness. We pray for your grace. We pray for mercy. We pray for your healing, Lord God. I think of April's Aunt Normandy, Lord God, and, and I think of our own uh, sister uh, Jen, Lord God, still, I think is finally, you know, Lord, recovered from that. And uh, we know you brought Randy through this as well, Lord God. I think of my friends Larry and Mary, who used to go here, Lord God, who were... Uh, uh, battling and struggling with it right now. And there are other people in our families, Lord God, um, even too many to name as it still spreads. But we pray, Lord God, for your grace and for your mercy and for your help. People like in, in hospitals or people getting cared for at home, help us, Lord God, help people to recover, I pray. Let your mercy and grace be upon people and help us, Lord God, to love and to pray for and to minister to one another and show the love of Christ in how we reach out and try to care, Lord God, for one another. Yes, Lord, I pray for our church. I pray that the ministry of our church, Lord God, would be strong. Even in these hard times, help us to be focused on what it is that you created churches to be and to serve you. Help us not to just look inwardly to ourselves, but help us to consider one another, to love one another and stir one another up to love and good works, to glorify and to serve you. We pray for the people in our families who don't know you, our friends who don't know you, or the people we meet that don't know you, that you would use us to reach them gen uh, uh, courageously, Lord God, and graciously with the gospel of Christ. Use our church, the, the people of it, the ministry of it, the, the services of it, to reach people for Christ and help us be the worshipers and servants of you no matter what, faithfully enduring to the end. We know the way that leads to life is narrow 
and difficult. Help us to walk it, following hard after you, being the sheep of your pasture, hearing your voice and following you. Help us to be devoted to your word, devoted to prayer, devoted to fellowship, devoted to love. Help us to serve you and to worship you and to honor you and glorify you. No matter what else goes on, may it be known that you have a people who love you and know that you are our God and our King. We bow before you and we just worship you and we praise you. We love you not because we were smart enough to put it all together or figure it out. We're nothing hopelessly depraved without your grace. But you reached us and loved us first and brought us into love by your power, by your gospel, by your grace through faith. And we rejoice. We are the beneficiaries of that great new covenant sealed in Christ's blood sealed by the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Hallelujah. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit, Lord God, that the fruits of the spirit would be manifest and evident and put to use in our walk here. Praise your holy name. I thank you, Lord God, that we could have this time to be gathered together here tonight. And I thank you, Lord God, for all of your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to, to pause on a, on a Tuesday evening like this and come together and pray. Um, the next time that we'll be online here will be Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and we'll have a Bible study. I've got one more psalm queued up, and uh, so be ready for that Thursday night at 7 o'clock. And... Uh, the men's fellowship will be this Saturday morning. I'll be uh, getting in touch with you in a day or two with some more details about that. And then, of course, we'll be back here on Sunday to worship as well. We're open Sunday morning here in person. You're welcome to come. Nice to see a nice group of people here. It's great. It's actually very gratifying to see a bunch of people gather in person and a bunch of people gather online. And that's just a really encouraging thing for any pastor to know that his church is assembling. Not that it's mine, but, you know. Uh, well, you know what I mean. And you see the people gathering and you know that that is a testimony to the world. Don't ever forget this. The gathered church is a manifest testimony to the world of the work that God has done to redeem people and to just love them and shepherd them as his own disciples. And whether you come here or you're online, be faithful and encourage one another. Okay? God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much for being here to pray together tonight. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for each other. Have a good night.